In this section, we're going to take a look at Euler paths and circuits and also Hamilton paths and cycles. Um, but in this video specifically, we will focus on Euler and Euler um, is focused on being able to transverse each edge in a graph. Recall when we began this chapter, chapter 10, we looked at the bridges of Koenigsberg problem. And in that problem, we had two sides of two land masses, obviously separated by a river, and we also had two islands. And then there are a total of seven bridges that connect the land masses and the islands. And we talked about how Euler took that and turned it into a graph that looks more like this, which made it easier to deal with. But what we didn't talk about is the fact that what we're actually trying to do in starting and ending at the same point and going over each edge, we're trying to find something called an Euler circuit. So an Euler circuit is just that. It's considered a circuit because we start at one point and we end at that same point and we can visit the nodes or vertices as many times as we want to, but what we want to do is travel each path only one time. Now your textbook goes through several pages talking about the necessary and sufficient conditions for there to be an Euler circuit or an Euler path. I'm going to just cut to the chase, so let's cut to the chase. In order for us to have an Euler circuit, we know that we must have a connected graph. And what we don't know, what we're going to talk about, is that every vertex must have an even degree. So let's think about why this makes sense. So again, we're talking about an underacted graph, and we're saying every vertex must have an even degree. So I'm not going to go through the proof. You can certainly Google a proof and find the solution. But what we can say is, if I need to start and end here, say this is my starting and ending point, it makes sense that I'm going to have a degree of one to leave that node or vertex, and then a degree of one at my new vertex because that's where it comes into, and then I'm going to have a degree of one to leave that vertex, and then a degree of one to come back from that vertex, and a degree of one to leave that vertex, a degree of one to come back to that vertex, a degree of one to leave that vertex, and a degree of one to come back to that vertex. So it makes perfect sense that every time I add an edge, I'm going to have one that's leaving and one that's coming in. And so it would make sense that each of these must have an even degree because you have to go into that vertex and then you have to leave that vertex. So again, feel free to read your textbook, but it really kind of takes the long and convoluted way to get there. So, or you can just trust me and say, yep, it makes sense that every vertex must have an even degree. Now that is to have an Euler circuit. Remember an Euler circuit is where I begin and end at the same point, the same vertex. Now, if I don't care about ending and beginning at the same vertex, but I just want to be able to travel over every bridge, then I can look at an Euler path. And an Euler path is similar, obviously, to an Euler circuit. I still want to tr uh, transverse every single edge, but what's different is I can end and begin at a different point. And so if we think about that, let's just take one of those edges away. If I have exactly two edges of odd degree, so this is a degree one, degree two, degree two, degree three. If I have exactly two edges of odd degree and I begin at one of those and end at another one, then I should be able to still go over every edge. So let's say I'm starting at one like I did last time. I can travel to three, to two, to the two, and then back to the three. So those two odd nodes are going to be my beginning and ending nodes or vertices. So let's take a look at the three graphs I have here. The first graph is obviously the bridges of Koenigsberg problem. So this has a degree of five, this has a degree of three, this has a degree of three, and this has a degree of three. So based on what we know, and we already talked about the fact that no, you couldn't do this, but we didn't talk about why. So now we know why we cannot have 
either a circuit or a path. So that means I can't go over every single bridge only one time, whether I begin and end at the same point or begin and end at different points, because I have four vertices of odd degree. Let's look at B. I've got a degree two, a degree three, a degree two, a degree three, a degree two. So based on that, it seems that I should be able to have an Euler path. Remember, an Euler path means I'm going to go over each edge, but I'm not going to begin and end at the same point. So let me just begin at D. Remember, I have to start at an uh, vert vertice of odd degree. So I'm going to start at D and then I want to just go over every edge. So let's say I want to go this way first and then over to A and then back down to D and then over to C and then back up to B. So notice I began at D which was odd and I ended at B which was odd. So B has an Euler path. Last one I have a degree 2, degree 2, degree 4, degree 2, degree 2. So when you have all even degrees, you get to start wherever you want and then just com continue completing circuits. So let's say I start at E. So if I start at E, then I can go to A and then to B and then to E and then to D and then to C and then back to E. Or I could have started at A, A, B, E, C, D, E, A. You see there are several that I can do. Um, I can start at any one of those vertices and it will work out for me to have an Euler circuit. Looking at directed graphs, we can see that the conditions are almost the same, but we do have an additional condition that the in degree and the out degree must be the same for each and every vertex in the vertex set. So let's take a look at why that might be. If I look at A, A has an in degree of zero. There are no edges going into A, but an out degree of two, whereas B has an in degree of two and an out degree of zero. Now for D and C, they both have an in and out degree of one. So these are okay. But what's gonna happen is when we get to B, because there's no out degree, we're stuck there. So for instance, let's say I start at A, I can travel to B going in the direction of the directed edge, travel from D to C, travel from C to B, but now I'm stuck there. There's no way for me to go anywhere else because there is no out degree. So A doesn't have an Euler circuit and doesn't have an Euler path. Let's look at B. A has an in degree of two and an out degree of two. And again, total, that is even. So two plus two is four, so that's an even degree. B has an in degree of one and an out degree of one. Whoops. C is an in degree of one and an out degree of one. D has an in degree of two and out degree of two. And E has two going in and two going out. So according to our conditions, there should be an Euler circuit. So where do I start? Wherever I want to. Remember when we have all vertices of even degree, and in this case, all in degrees equal to out degrees, we can start anywhere we want. So let's just start at A. And then we're going to follow the direction. So let's say I want to go to E first. Now from E, maybe I go down to D and then up to A and then down to D and then over to C and then up to E, over to B, over to A. So notice I began and ended at A. And I could do the same thing um, starting at A and ending at A with a different path, or I could start at a different vertex. Let's look at our last one. A, this is example C. So A has an in degree of one, an out degree of two. B has an in degree of one and an out degree of one. C has two coming in, one going out and D has one in, one out. 
And so now what? Well, notice before when we talked about Euler circuits and Euler paths, we said, okay, if it was a path, then you have to begin or end at one of the odd vertices. So obviously I'm going to have to begin or end at A or C. Now, which makes the most sense? Well, I'm gonna get stuck at C because there's two coming in. So I'm gonna start by coming out at A. Let's come out at A, go down to D, over to C, back up to A. So notice I started here because I have two coming out then over to B, down to C. So I have in fact created an Euler path. And the reason I knew that I could do that is because I was able to visit A twice because I could leave A twice. If I would have started at C, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Now your textbook, as I said before, has about three pages talking about how to determine that we need two even or uh, sorry, all even or exactly two odd vertices in order to have an Euler path or circuit. Um, what it doesn't do is talk much about an application. It says, hey, by the way, here's a paragraph that talks about if you want to go over every street in a neighborhood and so on and so forth. So I wanted to throw in an application that wasn't in your textbook. In this question, essentially what we have is a rotating drum that divided into eight sectors and I want to be able to turn this. So obviously this is turning clockwise. I want to be able to turn it so that whatever three values I have here are going to be the output. So for instance, if this was a one and a zero and a zero, then my output would be one, zero, zero. So the question is, how do I number all of these spaces in the rotating drum so that as I continue to turn this drum clockwise, I end up with all eight possibilities for a three-digit string. So just to recall, in case you don't remember, the three-digit strings would be 000, 001, 010, 011, 01, sorry, 100, 101 and 110111. So these are all of the eight that I need. So how am I going to use graph theory to determine this? Well, let's take a look at just the first two. Uh, let me make a little bit more room. We'll just take all this space over here. What if I labeled this 00, 01, 10, and 11? Now I'm going to create a directed graph and in that directed graph I'm going to only connect values if the ending bit of the first one matches the beginning bit of the second one. So notice this is 0, 0, it ends in 0, so I can connect it to 0, 1 because the zeros match up. So I'm going to connect that 0, 0 to 0, 1 and because 0, 0 begins in 0, I can also connect 0, 0 to itself. Now let's take a look at 0, 1. So 0, 1 ends in a 1, which means I can connect to anything that begins in a 1. So I cannot take it back over here because it ends or begins in a 0, but I can take it right over here because that begins in a 1, and I can take it right over here because that begins in a one. But again, I can't connect it back to itself because it ends in a zero or begins in a zero. Do the same thing for one zero, it ends in a zero. So I can go to anything that begins in a zero. So I can go back up here or I can go right over here. And then this one has a one, ends in a one so I can take it to anything that begins in a one. So to begin in a one would be right over here. And to begin in a one would be back to itself. So now I have my graph and you might be thinking, okay, great. That was a fun little exercise, but how does that help us? Well, it helps us because I want to get to all eight of these bit strings. So I know that I want to start uh, first, let's talk about the degree of each. This one has an in degree of one, two, an out degree of two. 
This one has an in degree of 2 and an out degree of 2. This one has an in degree of 2 and an out degree of 2 and an in degree of 2 and an out degree of 2. And again, because each loop would add one in degree and one out degree. So based on that, we know there actually is a um, Euler circuit. Now, where am I going to start? Again, wherever I want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start at 1, 0, because that's where I began right over here. So I'm going to start at 1, 0. Um, let me choose a different color. So I'm going to start at 1, 0, and I'm going to travel first to 0, 0. And again, why did I choose 0, 0? Only because I already had the 1, 0 and the 0, 0. Okay, so where am I going to go from there? Again, anywhere I want. So I can go from 0, 0 to 0, 0. That would make this value a 0. And then from 0, 0 to 0, 1. That would make this value a 1. I can go from 0, 1 to, say, 1, 1. That would make this value a 1. And then from 1, 1 to 1, 1. That would make this value a 1. And then from 1, 1 to 1, 0, which would make this value a 0. And then this would go from, let's see, 1, 0 to 0, 1. So again, that value is a 1, which we already knew. And then back to 1, 0, which would make this value a 0, which we already knew. So as you can see, I've now traveled over each edge and I have my Euler circuit which gives me the order in which I should have the values on my graph. So again it doesn't matter where I begin I'm just going to recopy for the sake of clarity but essentially I'm going to have three zeros in a row three ones in a row and then a zero one and now whichever way I spin this at some point I'm going to get each of those eight bit strings. So while Euler was very concerned about going over each edge of a graph, now we're going to take a look at Hamilton, and Hamilton paths and cycles have everything to do with making sure we visit each vertex once and only once.